Welcome to the Core Women Podcast, the place for women entrepreneurs, authors, and self-starters looking to build community and gain valuable insight through expert interviews with women at the top of their game. Join your host, podcaster, producer, expert coach, entrepreneur, and author, Dr. Summer Watson, as she aims to inspire and empower you through these candid conversations. Lean in and embrace the journey. It's time to start the show. Here's your host, Dr. Summer Watson. Today on the show, I would like to welcome Sarah Pfeiffer, who is a CEO, strategist, coach, host of the Green Room Central podcast, and founder of Live Event Academy, a group coaching experience for entrepreneurs who are starting or scaling events in their businesses. She has spent the last two decades helping business owners leverage virtual, hybrid, and in-person events to reach more dream clients, build customers, and employee loyalty, and improve sales. There's so much to talk about here, so let's jump right into this, Sarah, and welcome. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I know it's early for you. So before we delve into your professional background, can you describe your journey so far in one word? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Really? Yeah. Yeah. Roller coaster. (laughs) Roller coaster. Okay. Tell us why roller coaster. I, I love that though. I do. I really wanted to say keep going, but that's two words. And I could sort of thought I could maybe get away with smushing roller coasters. One. <laughs> okay, let's go with the two words or even roller coaster. So keep going or roller coaster. Which one resonates with you more? Entrepreneurship is such a journey. And I think that, um, gosh, keeping going is like the magic, the only thing that you need. <laughs> yeah. Because once you have your vision and your why, yeah, as long as you keep going, yeah, it's yours. Tell us more about that because I'm an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. I've worked in the private and nonprofit sector and probably one of the most difficult jobs is entrepreneurship because it's not that you're on your own. It just has like a roller coaster. It's got its ups and downs. It's weird flows. It can mm-hmm. go very tangential. It can be very nonlinear. So what has that been like for you? Exactly what you described. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, early on, I was so clear on my destination and really genuinely surprised that it is as hard and takes as long as it does. Yeah. Uh, because I'm like, well, I'm a smart girl. I can figure it out, right? Um, yes. And I won't make any of those like errors that uh, all of the gurus and mentors share, like of the things not to do. Of course, I wouldn't fall into that trap. <laughs> <laughs> and it is just so surprising how it can happen to the best of us. Uh, and it's such a fulfilling ride all at the same time though, too. Like, even though it can be up and down, I think there's such joy and fulfillment in building something yourself and having that vision that nobody else does and being the only person who can lead your team to make that vision a reality. It's just, so there's something special about that. And So yeah, keeping going is the magic. (laughs) Well, I do love that because it is so important. Even I just a couple of days ago, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm putting on this conference and there's some ups and downs. My husband's like, you know, you have to take some risks when you're an entrepreneur. And I'm like, I know these are the biggest risks I've taken so far. You know, I mean, I got a doctor and I go to this, I go to that. Yep. This seems to be a huge I mean, calculated risk, but some risks you just take. So, yeah. and it takes courage. So I love those words. Yeah. I, I like that word courage because I do think it takes more than I ever imagined it would. Yeah. It's not easy to keep going. And I see why so many businesses fail because there's been a million points at which it would have been so easy to stop. Yeah. 
But keep going. I love that. That's a great way to start this. So we're going to keep going. And I want to ask you about the Green Room Central podcast. You're the founder and host of this podcast. Tell us more about it. Mm -hmm. So the podcast is all about giving small business owners the strategies and tools and encouragement that they need in order to start or scale events in their businesses. And so I interview women like you who have, and men who have hosted their own events and break down what worked and what didn't work and what they were thinking along the way. And then I jump in there for solo episodes as well to just uh, talk about what's on my heart. It's like, I think tomorrow I'll record one about the uh, the event I just produced overseas and just a few learnings on producing international events. So just Ooh. stuff like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's so cool. I can't wait to listen. So you also are the founder of Live Event Academy. Mm-hmm. Tell us about that. Yeah. So when I, uh, I've, I've been in the business of producing events for over 20 years now, and they're my favorite thing to do. I'm just hugely passionate about gathering people, people who want to be gathered uh, and people who want to be together and gather them for content and community and connection. And when I, I was in the corporate space for some time and when I exited, I took some time to kind of reflect on what the next chapter would be and decided that it was time to put a flag in the sand and help small business owners, specifically the the ones that have digital products. So courses, memberships, maybe they're coaches, authors, speakers, and they want to, they have established businesses with established cash flow and established communities who are asking them to start hosting events. And maybe they're using events as fulfillment events for a high ticket mastermind, or maybe they're using events as a beginning of the funnel way to warm up prospects and turn them into buyers, or maybe further along in the funnel where you're inviting current customers to an event to deepen that no love trust with you and each other and invite them into a higher tier offer. But those are the people I work with. And I just felt such an attachment to uh, at that time and, and thought, well, how could I help them? And what I decided to do was take the years and years and years of my experience and pull it out of my head and organize it into a system, a repeatable system uh, that businesses could pick up and adapt to their own needs. And so I call that Live Event Academy. And it's a group coaching program that is filled with not only like video trainings that you can do on your own pace, but also the tools and and guides and checklists that that a business owner would need along the way. So I'm super proud of it and um, love how business owners are able to take action based on what's inside of there. No, oh, I love that. We all need that checklist and guides and tutorials and mm-hmm. video mentorship of sorts. I, I just absolutely love that. And you're taking all of that incredible wisdom and expertise and applying mm-hmm. that to your own business. Like you said, you put your, your flag in the sand and it was time to go. And so you've done that. What has been the most rewarding thing about entrepreneurship for you? Mm-hmm. You know, it sneaks up on you, but uh, the things that I wished for, like simple stuff, like being the mom who picks their kiddo up from school every day, uh, I get to be that mom. And the flexibility that comes with owning your own business is is second to none. I, I absolutely love it. I mean, yeah, does it come with a whole lot of other responsibilities? Sure. But the flexibility to own my schedule is huge and probably one of my very favorite things. Awesome. I love that. I want to know more about how you support your clients in building their customer loyalty Mm -hmm. and how they can improve their sales. Maybe a couple of tips. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So I, I'm a big believer that events build loyalty because it, they're such an intimate environment. And so they create such deeper connections with you as the event host, as the, the leader of the business, but also between guests who are there. And that is such magic for stickiness. And so brands can use that as a way to build employee loyalty with team events or to build loyalty um, with their customers and prospects with client-facing and community events. It's such a valuable tool. And I, I can't think of any other in our tool belts that we have as business owners more so than events. And and I think we all saw that in this big giant case study we all just went through called the pandemic, <laughs> where they were taken away from us, our ability to gather in person and how much we missed and placed such a high value on that opportunity, the vehicle of events to allow us to come together around a, a shared belief or value or bit of education that we want to learn it and then how much joy it brings us to be together so yeah i i'm just such a huge fan of using events as a loyalty builder and then when it comes to sales i think events are fabulous at the beginning of the funnel as a way to warm up prospects to get them uh, make easier high ticket sales. Uh, and, and I am using the word high ticket strategically in there. I think if you have some sort of high ticket offer, uh, an event is a fabulous way to warm up prospects uh, before making that offer. And you could be making the offer at the event or following up with uh, on the phone afterwards, but it's such a fabulous tool for that. People are just in a different space. Imagine when you've been on vacation and how you are such in a different headspace about how you do your shopping, whether you know it's food or even souvenirs, art, you just think differently. You're just like yeah. you've removed from the the day to day and you just make different choices. And events have a way of magically doing the same thing and guests just get in a different place mentally uh, and are prepared to make different decisions and also i think the like we talked about a little bit earlier about the no love trust no like trust they um they just feel such a deeper connection to you and it happens so much faster and so they're willing to open up their pocketbooks and make an investment in themselves in that time. I think another factor to why events work for sales is people, when they're in event environments, they try on new versions of themselves or live into higher, um, live into versions of themselves that they wish came out to play more often in real life. And because we're with, we're away from home and we're with people that we're not usually with. And so, and, and typically the, the event leader is such a strong facilitator that it kind of pulls, um, introverts like myself out of our, our shells. And we just, we try on different versions of ourselves. And when we're doing that in an event environment, we are more likely to try on the version of ourselves that would want to uh, step into that next level offer that is made at the event, like to, to be the person who identifies as someone who does things like that, who invests in themselves, who goes for it. And so just for all those reasons, it's, it's just such a fabulous way to make sales. I love all of what you said. I am actually going to be doing an event here pretty soon. So yes, one of the key and core values and tenets that I have always loved is connecting folks. And so when we use the word network, it doesn't resonate with me because it makes me think of years ago when tech started to explode and we started using all these computers, it reminded me of linking computers. Because we 
we call it networking. And so I thought, let's take it to the next step. Let's take it to relationship building. And when you have these on site, even digital, the more in person events, that connection is so different. The feeling, as you mentioned, it does stick. It sticks and it makes you feel different. It makes mm-hmm. you feel alive, courageous, and all the stories that you've heard or might hear are those stories that can change lives. So I love in-person events. I absolutely love them. So thank you for those great tips and how you support your clients, the description of how you support your clients and those customers and how you can build employee loyalty and improve sales. Because I think when we talk about that, it really gives it a good focus. Like, oh, okay, boom, boom, boom. That's what she does. I get it. You know, that's how she helps individuals. That's how she helps companies. So what do you think about because we were in two years of a pandemic, we had to make this great shift of going digital with everything. And so we had to do, or we did make the shift of going into digital events. Mm -hmm. Did that create the same types of space and connection? Surprisingly, yes. I think everyone was surprised that we could do it so well. And what we're seeing now I love the innovation that came from adding virtual events to all of our tool bags as business owners. And I think what we're seeing now um, a couple years in is the shakeout of finding where is the exact right fit for a virtual event and then where is the the right fit for an in-person event. Mm -hmm. And I love that. I am seeing that virtual events are shaking out as having a really nice home at the beginning, like the top of the funnel. So be able for events where you're enrolling people into their very first offer with you, their very first purchase. I think the, the virtual event, especially when done at that low ticket or free space, but high value, um, like multi-day, is it's a great fit for that that top of the funnel because people f- see virtual as less of a commitment than going to an in-person event and obviously from a financial standpoint it's less of a commitment too they just feel a little bit less committed and you'll get more people signing up it's to attend it's also more accessible. So you'll be able to get people from across the globe if you wanted, who definitely would not for someone they haven't met before make, make the trip. Right. So uh, I think it's great at that top of the funnel, like very beginning, but then I think people are using those in-person events for fulfillment of a mastermind for, you know, when you want to create that deeper, long lasting connection, like bring them together in person. It's also possible to use the virtual vehicle as a way to fulfill on pieces of your programs. And I think it's become much more acceptable. I think a lot of people have programs where they would get together several times a year. And I think you can very easily eliminate uh, maybe a couple of those touch points, turn them into virtual events, and then make just one big kind of in-person uh, event for if, if you're fulfilling on a mastermind, for example. And, and then people are still figuring out what to do with this whole hybrid option. And I just, I'll hop on my soapbox for a moment and share that I really want people if they considering going to a hybrid event to make sure that they accept that they're running two events at the exact same time. And so um, if we can agree on that, then we can agree that they would require the same level of investment from a time and an energy and a money standpoint. And we can agree that 
both audiences hold equal weight and deserve that same level of attention. And when people go into creating a hybrid event like that, I'm all for it. Uh, so many people think that like we can pick one as the second class citizen mm -hmm. and, and then it just doesn't, it doesn't work the same. People have come to expect such a higher bar when it comes yeah. to virtual events that we don't get to go back to that right. whole like live streaming version of virtual events where you can just buy the ticket to like yeah. basically watch from the back of the room. Uh, people value, uh, they've been on so many amazing virtual events with high production value and high interactivity that they're, they're not here for just hanging out, like watching TV anymore. Yeah, absolutely. I love how you broke that down and finding that balance because it is important that we find that balance and what that looks like for each of us in regards to virtual events, as well as in-person events. I actually, just as an aside, when I was getting my doctorate, because I was a military spouse and having to move quite often, one of the schools that I looked at and actually decided to attend had mixed methods in regards to the way they presented their curriculum. And so we did exactly that. We went on site for residency twice a year to start our classes, meet our professors, meet the other students. And then from that, we did a lot of the at-distance learning. So it was very uh, mixed format, but it really worked. And it worked because of what I had to do also in my life, having to move and being able to do something like that twice a year, go on site twice a year. So, yeah, I think in the past before the pandemic and before virtual became such a thing, I think we just turned a blind eye to all of the other needs of our audience, of, of the people who we just kind of didn't really see the people who needed things to be a little bit more flexible or accessible. Absolutely. And I love that that virtual is a gift for all of the people who have accessibility needs and it, it can be, it can look like what you just described where I just need a little bit more flexibility on like how I show up because of what's going on in my life. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I don't think I would have been able to get my doctorate mm -hmm. unless I had that option because at the time and now since then things have blossomed and bloomed that there are a lot of those different options, but at that time there were very few. And so that was one of the schools that actually was doing exactly what you said before it even was a huge concept. So mm -hmm. it was like, Oh, okay. They were actually doing something really innovative at the time. And so I love that they were allowing their students that flexibility, which also allowed students to come from all over the world mm. to be able to learn and integrate and connect both online and in person at those residency conferences, which is fantastic. So we loved everything we touched on here. Your personal background, we touched on a bit, uh, a lot of your professional background and what you do and what you offer others. So as we come to the close of this interview, my last question is, if you leave the listeners with some words of wisdom, what would they be? Mm, I love that question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I would say invest in yourself because I think while we talked at the beginning about uh, keep going is such an essential piece of entrepreneurship, I would say that the way to do that is your investment in yourself, in personal growth, in your health. Because until you realize that you are the only obstacle to anything that you want, yeah, like there there will be a wall to what you can achieve, you know, in front of in front of you and, and will keep you from achieving those big dreams. So I would say that the sooner you can like me um, set aside your potential biases uh, that, you know, it's woo woo <laughs> because that's yeah. the camp that I was in for so long and realize it's for you, uh, the better off you'll be. 
Oh, my goodness. Love those words of wisdom. And thank you, Sarah, for joining me on the Core Women podcast today. Oh, I've loved being here. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Thank you. You can follow Sarah Pfeiffer on LinkedIn, Instagram, and at her website at sarahpfeiffer.com. Thank you for joining us on the Core Women Podcast with Dr. Summer Watson. We're so glad you're here and would love to connect more with you. Find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Core Women and on Twitter at Core Women One. For more about Core Women and Dr. Watson, visit corewomen.com. Want more support and resources for amazing women like you? Great! Join Dr. Watson and Jen Fontanilla at the Life, Love, and Money Collective, a core women production that aids in understanding the key traits that might be getting in the way of living a life that you are absolutely passionate about. Connect with Summer and Jen and find out more at thelifeloveandmoney.com.